Hello, and welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, a uh, nice relaxed and casual class. Here we'll be having a conversation class, and our topic is travel. I find that most language learners enjoy traveling, and uh, so. Uh, we are just going to have, uh, I'm, I will be facilitating a conversation about travel and maybe guiding us into talking about good points, bad points, a little past tense, a little future tense, what have you. And uh, as we go along, if I find points to give you feedback about, I will be doing so. All right. Let's just uh, relax and enjoy the conversation. Uh, Hello, Vera. Welcome to the class. Hello, hello. Well, <laughs> thank you for welcoming mm. me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can welcome me. That's okay. Uh, uh, all right. Okay, and uh, uh, okay. Also, Nguyen. Uh, hello, welcome. Uh, Tao. Okay. You're gonna have a different picture. Uh, okay, are are you the same Tao who, who I met the other day? Well, welcome to the class. Okay, can you do you have a microphone? That would definitely be helpful. It's you. Can you speak though? Is my question. And welcome to you. And that's welcome one word. <laughs> welcome. Uh, okay. It would be useful if you if you have a microphone or if you can get you can find one <laughs> or a headset microphone is even better. It would be great since this will be a conversation class and I will be giving you feedback or commenting on your English conversation <laughs> skills or abilities or whatever. Um, Okay, if you can, that that would be great. All right, let's let's get started. Uh, plenty of room in the class. Okay, you want to listen? Uh, all right. Well, Vera, that means it's you and me. Plenty of room in the class if others would like to join us. Come on in and uh, join the conversation. Vera, let's start with the obvious question: Do you enjoy traveling? <clears throat> um, well, I, I really enjoy traveling, and I believe that while you're traveling, um, you're not only discovering the world, but also you're discovering something in yourself. Uh -huh. so well put. I've been to many countries, so I guess I traveled around Europe, and um, uh, after that, um, I really I changed. <laughs> so. Yeah, I totally understand that. Uh, yeah, I also enjoy traveling. O okay, uh, hang on. Uh, we'll be talking a lot more about your travels. Um, uh, let me first welcome Hogan to the class. Hello, Hogan. How are you? Good, and how are you? I'm fine. Long time no see. Yeah, actually, actually I traveled and... Uh, I came back from Korea yesterday. Okay. Speaking of travel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, all right. How was your trip? Yeah, it was fantastic, and I I visited Jeju Island, the the biggest island in Korea South. It was beautiful mm -hmm. weather there. Oh, really? Okay. Nice. Uh, okay. What's your favorite thing about Jeju Island? I've Never been there. I've, it's been recommended to me. I've had several Korean students. So, I, what did you enjoy about it? Uh, the color of sea and also food. So that's special. So if you go to any uh, technically any restaurants, you will see uh, good food. So I got some uh, weight after the trip. <laughs> that's what I, I don't really like it. <laughs> okay. But anyway, the food is great. Okay, uh, I gained some weight. Would be a better 
not we don't normally say I got some weight. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I gained some weight. Okay. You you got I got some books at the bookstore. I got some new clothes at the shopping mall yesterday. So something you buy, you don't really buy weight. <laughs> you do, <laughs> but indirectly. Of yeah. Okay. All right. What's your favorite? I, I like uh, Sam Gapsal. I like bibimbap. Do you have any favorite Korean dishes, Hogan? Yeah, uh, usually like a uh, bulgogi and naengmyeon and uh, bulgogi. Uh, yeah. Bulgogi, yeah, you probably know that, right? Yeah. It's kimchi. It's a side dishes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I I usually keep some kimchi in my refrigerator at all times, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Onar to the class again. Hi, Onar. How are you again? Hi. Hi, okay. Hi again. Hi. Again. Hi. <laughs> uh, we're basically having an open-ended conversation class about travel. So uh, the obvious question, uh, well, I, maybe not. Um, well, I guess so. Uh, do you enjoy traveling? Yeah, I think everyone like traveling, uh, but it depends on the location and the um, kind of the entertainment. Sometimes, some some people want to see some ancient places, like me. I love ancient places. Uh, we have a lot of ancient antique sites in Turkey, so. Mm -hmm. Every summer, uh, we went. We get. We get. Uh, we used to visit that kind of museums and uh, and ancient sites, ancient cities. Okay, ancient sites. That's that's correct. Archaeological sites, ancient sites, historical sites, whatever yeah. adjective you want to use. But uh, okay, cool. Uh, I, all right, what a. What is one of the best uh, historical sites that I could visit in, in Turkey? Uh, the best one, from my point of view, is yeah. um, Nevşehir. Nevşehir has some underground underground cities, uh, eight floors, nine floors, through the under uh, along the underground, not along to uh, go down the underground. Okay. Uh, they made by uh, first Christians who uh, who confront the Roman Empire, who don't uh, who don't who didn't want to comp um, make a war uh, by Roman Empire. Okay. They All run right. out from the. Uh, they run out from them. So they made some underground cities, and they lived um, underground. Each underground has the capacity of 10,000 people. Really? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Okay. Actually, I, 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 uh, after my turn, I will link the, some sites, official sites. I was going to ask that you do that. Actually, I was going to ask that you write the at least write the name of the uh, site in the verbling chat box. That would be great. Uh -huh. I'd like to check that out because I know very little about it. All right. In reference to your English, however, uh, a little bit of feedback. They ran away. Past yeah, tense, yeah. obviously. It's past tense. Historical site. They ran away, and they were trying to avoid the Roman Empire and I suppose the Roman Empire's troops the legionnaires <laughs> I suppose uh, okay alright and uh, below the ground the the uh, okay they excavated or dug out uh, eight what did you say eight nine ten floors uh, below the ground uh, okay you can also call those when it's uh, underground, like even an underground parking garage in a city or whatever. You can um, call
call those uh, subfloors. Sub. Subfloors. Yeah. yeah. Sub meaning under, like submarine, obviously under the water. Uh, okay. So, uh, all right. It's quite fascinating. I know. I don't. I know very little about it. Thank you for the link. Wow. Okay. Crazy. Uh, all right. That is pretty wild. Uh, okay. Um, in reference to your your question, Tao, uh, it's okay if you communicate with other students during the class. That's not a problem. Um, especially if you have a question. There's two chat boxes: the Google chat box, the Hangout chat box and the Verbling chat box. As the teacher at Verbling, I have to use the Verbling chat box, of course, and uh, uh, I, I tend to use, I use it for, you know, to be a professional. Uh, for English-based, I would prefer it if you use that for, Eng you can, since you don't have audio, if you have an English-based question, um, I would prefer that it, you use the Verbling chat box. That would be easier for me since I have to keep it open. I'm bound to. It's my job. And uh, I frequently will, will write sentence structures or vocabulary that I'm talking about. So you may want to keep that open. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Uh... All right, I'm going to, Ken has also joined us. You guys are joining the class one at a time, just as I finish speaking with another person. It's oh. kind of fun. <laughs> okay. Great. Hi, Ken, again. Yeah. Ken, we're, we're talking travel, open-ended conversation about travel. Mm -hmm. uh, when was the last time you were able to do some traveling? Last time, a long, uh, short travel, maybe uh, I often travel around this area. In terms mm -hmm. of short travel, it's recent. It, uh, but the, however, in terms of long time travel, long travel, I rarely travel, you know, <laughs> abroad or uh, far away from here nowadays. So, I don't... Uh, Maybe last time I went to the America, that could be the last long travel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and normally we don't say short travel, long travel. We say long trip, short trip. Uh, short trip, long trip, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. when, when did you go to the United States? Maybe five years ago or something. Uh-huh, all right, okay. Where did you go in the U.S.? Uh, the, uh, how can I say? A uh, small town close to Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Uh, uh, the hometown of R.E.M. Or oh, B-52. Athens. <laughs> yes, Athens. Yeah, you know that. Oh, wow. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been there. Oh, of really? Oh, yeah. really? I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a university town. Right. Yes, a university and a lot of clubs in downtown. Yeah. You know, it's it, a it, kind of music scene right out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very artistic based town, uh, music scene and all yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, of course, I went there, Ken. <laughs> My kind of play. Wow. Uh, yeah, okay. Plus, you know, B 52s, home of the. Rock Lobster. Okay. <laughs> uh, crazy. Okay. That is an int that is not your typical tourist destination. Yes. Absolutely not. Exactly. Okay. So why did you choose to go there? Because I, you know, uh, I was an exchange student. I participated in the exchange student program in, the, in my graduate school. So I went there. I could go there. Yeah. Oh, cool. I see. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, okay. What, <laughs> what did you think of Athens, Georgia? Ah, uh, actually, you know, the size of America is much more larger than, than Japan. So at the beginning, I surprised that 
how huge it is. The land is huge, and landscape is huge, and uh, you know, in a downtown, and everybody has uh, has uh, has car, car, but uh, I don't have a car in America, so uh, I realize it's very inconvenient uh, life without having car here, there. You know, the yeah. it, 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 downtown is a lot of crafts, but there's no convenience stores at downtown, so. I have to go to the Walmart shop to buy something, but uh, it takes maybe almost one hour by city bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely true. It's it's really practically impossible to live in the United States if you don't have a car, unless you you know you live in a major metropolitan area and you. Right reasonably close to where you work or where mm -hmm. you go to school. Yeah. It's very difficult. It's a pain in the neck. Uh, all right. Interesting. Okay. I never, I didn't, I never knew that you went there. That's, that's oh, oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. We'll talk to you a little bit more about that a, a bit later. Um, let me return to Vera, who is a self-professed world traveler. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 world traveler. Um, I guess Europe traveler. <laughs> Europe traveler. Okay, European, the continent, as we colloquially call it. All right, a lot of travel in Europe. Uh, all right. So let's talk Europe. Uh, what are uh, maybe two or three are your favorite? Uh, spots in Europe that maybe are not so familiar. I mean, never mind the Eiffel Tower or the Louvre. We all know about that. Can you can you talk to us about a couple, three places maybe we don't know about? Well, it's hard to say because as a visitor, of course, uh, of course I visited a very um, famous, uh, popular sightseeing. And uh, it's hard to remember these, uh, you know, places that. Um, actually, I don't have anything that <laughs> comes to my mind. Maybe kind of parks and cafes that aren't very popular, but I uh, really enjoyed them. Um, right. Uh, yes. <laughs> or it can be secret for me, <laughs> not oh. to make it popular for everyone. Really? <laughs> oh, well, fine. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Well, okay. Maybe popular area or, or whatever. What is something that really impressed you in your travels around mm -hmm. Europe? Uh, all right. A year ago, I went to Moldova, and um, um, uh, some relatives of my husband's uh, they live there. Of my husband, they live there, and we went to wine cellar, and it was really impressive for me. Just um, this wine cellar consists of, um, you know, uh, this great amount of rooms and places. Uh, with uh, <laughs> with wine bottles and it's like um, underground uh, city, real city, <laughs> where you can uh, ride a car, even or drive a car or ride mm -hmm. your bicycle. Just choose uh, the street you want to <laughs> you want to travel to and just taste the wine you want to taste. Um, yes, it, it was just incredible. Okay. Uh, all right. This is a little bit of a niche tourist activity, but I have done it myself in California wine country, doing a little wine tasting vacation. It's kind of kind of fun. I, I really liked it. <laughs> Especially afterwards, <laughs> at the end of your trip. <laughs> at the end of the day. Maybe? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I might recommend the Corbel uh, Winery in in uh, in Napa Valley. My gosh, they are very very generous. <laughs> A little too generous, if you get my meaning. 
Um, I'm, I'm sorry, can I ask a question? How to say in English when you want to try wine? Uh, and uh, it's, it's for free just in order to, to encourage you to buy a bottle, okay? How to, yeah. how to name this process? Well, okay, you're you're going you're doing the wine tasting process. They're they're giving you little samples. All right. Uh, okay. They uh, generally you go to a um, one of these places and they'll give you a tour, a little bit of a tour, right? And then the, at the end of the tour, they make you do the tour first, of course. Then they do the the uh, wine tasting. Uh, All right. I, I don't know. Oh, so we just tasting. Right. Yeah, our tasting. Our and tasting. It, it, yeah, and they, they frequently just say, "Oh, now it's time for the tasting. Let's go to the tasting room." They'll even say that. Uh, okay, we'd like to invite you into our tasting room and uh, like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that could be fun. Um, so, uh, wine tasting holiday is a great idea to have something like uh, a hot spa treatment <laughs> after your day so you can really relax. Yeah. Um, okay. Vera, have you ever traveled anywhere outside of Europe? Outside of Europe? Um, I guess no. Uh, if we consider uh, Turkey or Egypt as a, as a part of <laughs> my trip. So I've been to Egypt and to Turkey, but uh, I've never been somewhere abroad like in America or Canada. I'd like to go to Australia and I hope to, to go there next summer. Um, but, you know, it's, it's kind of very expensive. Just trip there is uh, extremely expensive uh, yeah. considering the, you know, the dollar rate. <laughs> um, because I live in Moscow, I live in Russia, and uh, mm -hmm. you know I have to pay 65 rubles for one dollar, so it's just the ex extremely expensive too. So I can't afford myself to go somewhere <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> right. Yeah, it makes it tougher to take vacations when uh, the money's exchange rate is. That's right. Uh, not to your advantage. So shall we say? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, maybe we can talk a little more uh, later. Let me quickly welcome Anna to the class. Hi, Anna. How are you today? Anna, are you there? Anna with two N's. Hello, hello. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you're having any issues with your uh, connection or or what, but I can't hear you right now. So if you can fix that, just give me a shout out so that I know that we can communicate. Uh, all right, let me go to Hogan then. Hello, Hogan, back to you. Okay. Uh, Hogan, uh, all right. So. Um, I want to ask you, have you ever had an unpleasant travel experience? Unpleasant? Yes, such as the hotel was not as advertised, or you lost your luggage, or your flight was canceled, or, or, or you were robbed, or, or, or. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things can go wrong on vacation. Not all yeah. is wonderful. I've never been robbed before, so I hope not. And um, yeah. I don't really find anything very bad, but sometimes I've experienced like some airplane delay, and some food is not really good. Um, some mm -hmm. some taxi drivers is not really kind. So I think that the kinds of kinds of things is everywhere in the world. So I don't really complaining that. So I'm expecting some sort of uh, unpleasant stuff, but not not the worst, like of being robbed or something. <laughs> okay, okay, nothing too uh, traumatic or dramatic. Uh, yeah, or both. All right. Um, do you uh, 
generally speaking, do you plan your vacations in great detail or do you wing it? Um, if I said I in the, in the middle, I'm not very detailed like every single hour. So after one hour, I'm going to there and uh, I check the train schedule. But I'm not going there without any plan. So I'm in the middle. I just roughly have uh, prepared some maps and uh, where to go, some website. Uh, so these days, I can use my um, uh, phone. So if I, if I have any uh, Anything that I need to know, then I usually check with the the, the hotel. So everywhere in there is internet. So this time uh, I went to uh, I visited Korea. Actually, uh, Korea is my hometown, and um, so usually the night before I um, visit somewhere, I just check a couple of hours to where to go, but not planned ahead like okay. just for the entire trip. Yeah, that's what right. I do. Okay. Uh, okay. I see. All right. Um, great. Have you ever done uh, any international trips? Um, so I'm native Korean and I'm mm -hmm. currently living in US. If I say international trip, uh, maybe the Thailand I would say because that was um, my honeymoon trip That's oh, a long yeah. time ago, and <laughs> Japan. Actually, that is not really a trip; it's for business trip. But it's kind of trip anyway. So I spent about a, a month in Japan, Tokyo, Tokyo, Japan, in capital of Japan, uh -huh. and okay. like uh, one week for honeymoon in Thailand. So that was two international trip, I would say. <laughs> uh, I would say so, too. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, all right, let me, let me move over to uh, owner. Owner? Owner? Owner! Uh, how about... Owner, are you there? Owner, are you there? Hello. Am I here? I get paranoid that I'm losing connection. Owner, are you there? Can you guys hear me? Check, check. Ken, can you hear yes. me? Yes, I hear clearly. Yes, okay. I can. Oh, okay. He dropped, it was him, his connection, <laughs> apparently. I'm sure he'll be right back. All right, in the meantime, Ken, let's... Uh, Okay, let's you and I talk for a little bit. Uh, Ken, how about you? When you go on a vacation, are you do you plan everything? Uh, it, or less weird? Maybe uh, I'm I'm a kind of spontaneous spontaneous person, so I don't mm -hmm. like <laughs> setting everything beforehand. But uh, one time I travel around Kyoto, uh, old capital in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed there. Maybe I've been there several times, so I know the location of Kyoto. So in one day, I set a plan and uh, to buy a one-day uh, bus ticket, uh, you know, travel around Kyoto. I, I don't know how does it say in English. One-day ticket. I can uh, we, yeah. I get on the bus for, for uh, as many as, as I can by using okay. that to get one day. So, and I set the plan on this temple and this shrine, because Kyoto has a lot of such kind of Asian traditional shrine temples, and, and uh, with my mother, and, uh, you know, because I set uh, that plan uh, traveling with my mother to introduce Kyoto city. However, <laughs> my mother is very talkative, and <laughs> oh, I'm uh, very curious about a lot of things. Oh, wow, what is that? What is that? And he, uh, he, he she was running a chi Chinese. And when the, uh, she met a Chinese tourist um, from Hong Kong, so or Taiwan, uh, yeah. So she, she, uh, you know, talked with them in Chinese, and uh, I talked with them in English. <laughs> oh, so I, I felt. Feeling of rush, maybe because I, we, we, I cannot, we cannot cons consume the, my plan 
<laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's a good a good memory now. Yeah, uh, yeah that's kind of funny. Okay, well, there you go. Know, one of the best things I love about traveling is uh, meeting people and becoming friends with people. Uh, that's just fun. Have you ever made friends with somebody when you're traveling, Ken? Ah, oh, sure. Because you know. Uh, I, I maybe we tend to feel alone while we are traveling. So yeah, I, I, small small talk or you know, just uh, to with strangers, it's, it could be nice. Yeah, it's easy mm -hmm. my feeling or, or sometimes you know, uh, before uh, I I went to Osaka for seeing the Mick Jagger's concert a long time ago. So I, I was waiting for the kind of today's ticket line, and I met some, one guy <laughs> close to my line. I began to talk about, you know, we have a common interest about, you know, the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. So our talking, uh, we started talking very, uh, we enjoyed talking a lot. And so I went, went uh, to the, uh, I went to the restaurant with, with him. And he is a native of Osaka people, so he knows a lot about that area. So, yeah, such kind of, you know, meeting, I, I mean, uh, making friends kind of thing is the one, you know, attraction of traveling, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Traveling to a rock concert in another city, <laughs> I've done a lot of that. Uh, Americans do a lot of that. Uh, okay, um, and it's a, and you're absolutely right. It's a very easy way to meet people because you obviously have a shared interest. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I've met a lot of people at rock concerts <laughs> all over the United States. To be honest with you, sometimes. Okay. Well, whatever. I. It's really cool when you meet somebody at a rock concert in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And then you see them again three years later at a rock concert in Seattle, Washington. Uh, like yeah. 2,500 miles away. Right. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, really I cool. I met a guy from Scotland uh, on Skype, and he, he was uh, living in Japan, and uh, he said uh, he went to the same concert because uh, I uh, saw the two concerts. But uh, one co Mick canceled one concert for the high fever, so he he was there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, kind of coincidentally, yeah. Okay. We experience a uh, uh, same shock in the concert hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. He canceled because of high fever. Uh, because of high fever. Yeah. Perhaps due to high fever, maybe mm -hmm. as well. All right. Oh, much earlier you said uh, you had an uh, all all day pass, all day bus pass. Oh, all day pass ticket. Mm -hmm. All yeah, day pass. Okay. That's what we would call it. Oh, I got an all day pass, mm -hmm. uh, all day city bus pass, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Probably what we'd call it in, in English. Okay. Uh, uh, well, that was fun. Um, okay. Uh, Vera, I guess back to you. Vera, let's talk. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk hypothetical. Let's talk future tense. Where would you really like to go? Where would you really like to travel to? Well, I would like to travel. I, I would definitely like to travel to America, uh, to United States. I'd like to visit New York and Central Park, but um, also. Um, um, I'm really fond of uh, Canadian nature, so I I've seen different pictures from different places in, ca place in Canada, and I'd like to, to see them, to take pictures of them. Well, and um, maybe I'd like to, to go to Australia, but not for traveling, for leaving. <laughs> Well, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yes, but, um, but, but you know, if, if I plan a trip, um, if I planned a trip, I would rather go to Ireland first of all, just to to try the right. Irish beer and also to meet these friendly people. 
and to hear this Irish uh, accent just to practice my English with this accent oh. just for me it's just adorable <laughs> <laughs> good luck good luck with the Irish, <laughs> Irish brogue uh, they actually call it Irish brogue uh, they, they recognize it as being a, just such a it has a, its own word for it. It's not that they have an accent like an American Southern uh, accent or a New England accent in America. They call it Irish brogue. It's it has its own word. <laughs> Good luck with understanding that. Well, I, I consider Irish people friendly people. Um, uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's the just like a stereotype, but I think. Uh, I think I'm right, so I'd, I'd like to go there. It's, and also, it's a mixture of some of historical sites and of nature. And, uh, I guess just with uh, this uh, architecture and with nature. But um, I hope to be lucky with uh, weather. Uh, I've also heard about um, the you know like, like raining cats and dogs all the time. <laughs> yeah, lots of rain. Yes, like grizzling all the time. Which is why it's so green, because they they don't lack for moisture. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, they're friendly because they drink too much. <laughs> they have so. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I feel I can say that. I have a lot of uh, Irish uh, ancestors, actually, a lot of Irish in my blood. Uh, okay. Well, I think American people aren't very sincere when they smile to you, when they ask you, how are you, how are you doing? So it's just like um, a simple greeting. And um, it's not very common for Russian people. Uh, we're usually, you know, <laughs> trying to be very sincere and on honest to, to people. So if you don't like one... <laughs> You will never smile to him, ever. But um, I believe Irish people are the same. So if you, they don't like you, uh, they they aren't going to show you this. But um, okay, all right. So social convention, you could call that. It's yes. Very social convention, <laughs> and to some degree, I I I, uh, I agree with you about Americans. But it depends. Yeah, you're going to always get social. Hi, how are you doing? Even if you don't like the person, you, people will bow to social convention, but that's all they'll do. Because believe me, if you can read between the lines and you know, you know. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? As opposed to, Hi, how are you doing? Good luck. Right. Yes. They will say well, hi, but there's a big difference how they say hi. <laughs> But but it, it it touches my heart deeply when I see a person who who is really happy to see me. But uh, yes, I can I can read through the lines through his eyes. Yeah. I don't know that this person yeah. actually that <laughs> this person doesn't love me at all. So <laughs> it's right. really I don't know how to react. I don't know to, how to um, interact with these people. So I would rather go to Ireland just to yeah. to. Yes, to experience their lifestyle and uh, their sure. drinking, <laughs> uh, drinking okay. experience. Read between the lines, by the way, just yes. to get the um, to get the idiom correct. You read between the lines. Okay, you, know, you understand what's not said, but maybe implied or or whatever. Uh, okay. Have you ever been to Australia? I, no, I have never been to Australia. Actually. I, I live in the Philippines now, so I'm a lot closer, and I haven't been yet. To be honest, I'm more interested in, I really like to go to New Zealand myself. I, I ski, and I live in the Philippines, and I, so I haven't skied in years. So I would love to go skiing in New Zealand, and I'm kind of at least preliminarily putting together a plan with a friend to do that, actually, which would be great. Uh, yes, New Zealand is uh, just an amazing place to yeah. visit. Okay. Yeah, I would like to go That's, there. I, I, I would use the word hard, um, uh, breathtaking, yes. <laughs> breathtaking. New, New Zealand, of course, was the background for the Lord of the Rings movies, right? So all that 
ridiculously beautiful landscape in, in those series of movies. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but... Yes, of course, of course. The, yeah, the landscapes are just phenomenal. Plus, uh, New Zealanders are notorious for being into extreme sports and uh, things like bungee jumping, kayaking, skydiving, skiing, etc. That's uh, the place for adventurous people. Exactly. So, sounds great to me. All right. Sounds like it's right up my alley. Something that I would really like to try. Right up my alley. Uh, okay. All right. Something that is very appealing to you. Or something, perhaps, something that's very appealing to you or something that you're very good at. You have a, a skill or an ability. It's right up your alley. Oh. Uh, Okay. Uh, can I say it's my cup of tea or something like that? Sure, exactly, yes, which means it appeals to you, yes. <laughs> it sounds like, uh, it's, it's, uh, it sounds like, I don't know, hypothetical, so it sounds like it would be my cup of tea. Sure. All right. Possible. Oh, okay. Let me um, switch gears and, and talk to Hogan for a minute. Okay, then how about you in the future? Okay, I know you just got back from a trip. I realize that, but um, where would you like to go? If you could go anywhere, where would you like to go to travel to? Um, I think the, the Argentina, Buenos Aires. I would like to go there. Really? Yeah. Cool. Because Why? Um, that's the origin of the dance tango. And I really like to watch them to dance. And um, actually, I saw a lot of uh, the videos from YouTube. And I re really like to um, learn the true dance tango and also watching professional dancers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's one of, um, one of the places that I want to uh, visit sometime later. I don't know when will be possible. But the problem is I cannot speak in Spanish. So it's a little trouble because if I don't speak and listen what they say, I may not be able to enjoy fully. So that's a little uh, trouble <laughs> right now. OK. Well, you can always learn. Um, all right. Uh, one way you can affect sometime in the future, but you don't have any idea when, you can say sometime down the down the road, or some somewhere down the line is another possibility. Okay, oh, okay. down down the line is another way we express the vague. You really don't know. You have vague idea of the future. Down the line, I'd like to go there. I've heard Buenos Aires is a very interesting place, actually. Mm. Um, have you ever been there before? No, I have not. Uh, any, city in, any city in Argentina? No, I've never been to Argentina. Oh, okay. but it, I, again, because I'm a skier, I was very interested in uh, for a long time in going to Patagonia, trying to ski, which is an area of the Andes Mountains, the southern Andes Mountains, mm -hmm, okay. uh, which are very high and very remote. I enjoy skiing, like uh, helicopter skiing or hiking up the mountain. Not a ski resort, but s just skiing on a mountain. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, again, that would be my cup of tea. Uh, <laughs> a little bit adventurous. Uh, I would love to go to Patagonia to go skiing. I'm sure if I went, I'd have to go to Buenos Aires as a kind of jumping off point. Uh, I've heard it's pretty cool. I, I've had Argentine students, and they talk to me about the city and uh, the country. It sounds quite fascinating, actually. It's quite a mix of cultures, a surprising mix of cultures, and uh, which has resulted in a sort of eclectic mix of architecture and the arts and... Uh, like, uh, you know, types of food available, all, all that kind of thing is sounds very interesting. Oh, what do you mean by ecle eclectic? Eclectic. 
here. Let me write it. Uh, okay. For example, an easy example, I have eclectic musical tastes. Mm -hmm. uh, I like classical music. I like punk rock. I like reggae. I like some classical rock. I like bluegrass music with fiddles and banjos and, and like that. I like all kinds of music, really. Mm. Uh, I like some African traditional music. Really, my tastes are extremely varied. So that's... I have eclectic taste, wide ranging. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, uh, what I've heard about Argentina and Buenos Aires in particular is that it's it's very eclectic. The architecture of the buildings, from very Gothic, traditional European to more Spanish based to more South American adobo type structures to a uh, they have um, I, a mix of cultures, uh, German influence, Japanese influence, so it's kind of strange, eclectic. That's, that's what I mean. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me, let me go to Ken here and ask him the same question. Ken, if you had, mm -hmm. your, had your druthers, you could do... Whatever you'd rather do, do uh, or uh, what we we call your druthers. If you had your druthers, you could take your pick. Uh, where would you like to go? To druthers. Druthers. Mean? Your druthers. Okay. What does? <laughs> okay. Uh, it comes from I would rather. All right. Uh, okay. I would rather druther. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a, it's like a reduced pronunciation of uh, yeah. I'd I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather not I'd rather not go there I'd rather have peanut butter. That's why native speakers English very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I face the such kind of thing a lot in in America. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, we actually have kind of made this a word if or at least an expression if you had your druthers and sure. we, use, we use this as a signal phrase to introduce a hypothetical question meaning if there were no other conditions and you could do whatever you wanted mm -hmm. you know money or time is no question if you had your druthers mm -hmm. which would you pick so if you had your druthers mm -hmm. where would you like to go on planet earth mm -hmm. or beyond you. <laughs> <laughs> I w w wouldn't go go to wouldn't uh, like to go to space because space is uh, maybe it's not so comfortable. <laughs> so and it's very costly. So I I now nowadays I often talk with uh, the guy from uh, from uh, living in Connecticut. So this time I went to go to the north, explore okay. the north north part of America. New York, right. Connecticut, New England, or because I think it's atmosphere, culture is uh, uh, different from Georgia, and, or the oh, language, wow. also the dialects are very different. So yeah, you're talking about where I'm from. If I yeah. were you, I'd give Connecticut a miss. I I, oh. I don't like Connecticut. <laughs> uh, I lived there for a summer with a with a, a college uh, buddy, and. Um, I couldn't stand it. I started to go crazy. It's so fake and plastic. It's a very wealthy state in comparison I, I to these think, other 50 states. I think so because George Bush originally came from Connecticut, actually. Mm, yeah, well, there and you go. Yeah. His riches, six packs. <laughs> a lot of Serbs. Yeah. Paul Simon. <laughs> a lot of Serbs are living in Connecticut because it's, yeah. it has a good uh, atmosphere of nature and it's close to New York. Probably that's why. Right. Rich people yeah. tend to live there. No doubt. And they can park their yacht because the, the ocean's right there. So, mm -hmm. yes, it's quite wealthy, actually. And it's very, there's something very fake about the highway. You drive down the highway, it's very beautiful. But if you go off the highway and around the corner, mm -hmm. it's like everything is a facade, a fake painted mm -hmm. wall. And if you go around the corner, it's like a trash dump. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Oh, really? I don't like Connecticut. No. <laughs> However, upstate New York, 
Well, New York City is wonderful, of course, and upstate New York is beautiful. The Adirondacks, mm -hmm. Vermont, where I'm from, is mm -hmm. incredibly beautiful. People are super friendly. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire and Maine are cool. Mm -hmm. Boston, Massachusetts, New England City, that's mm -hmm. a great town. It's a fun town. Uh, friendly people. Um, yeah. I, I actually I love all of New England, but except Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. see. Maybe, maybe uh, Connecticut is a bit special, unique yes. among these states in, in the north. Probably. Well, you, you have a point. New York City people, mm -hmm. the rich people in New York City basically mm -hmm. took over Connecticut. So mm -hmm. right. Connecticut's full of people from New York City. Once they get rich mm -hmm. enough, they, uh -huh. they migrate. Maybe they build a mansion there, or probably, yeah. I see. Or a Mick mansion, a, a mini mansion. <laughs> mini mansion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, okay, I have a question about, you said you would never go to space. Um, I don't know where it is in the timeline, but I know, of course, Virgin, you know, the company Virgin, Virgin mm -hmm. Airlines. Um, okay, I know that they are planning to to have tourist mm -hmm. uh, trips at least a little bit into space so you people mm -hmm. could experience weightlessness and, and all of that. And I believe there's a second company, mm -hmm. X, SpaceX, I don't know, and they are also do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Have the same idea, okay. One or the other or both, I don't know. They have um, some kind of competition where you can win a free ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, if you won a free mm -hmm. ticket, mm -hmm. yeah, let's imagine that you won mm -hmm. the free ticket to go on Virgin Airlines mm -hmm. out into space. Would you go, or would you give it to your mom? <laughs> uh, maybe I would. Uh... Maybe I would, how can I say, sell it on eBay or ah, auction. <laughs> it's because, yeah, okay. it's going to be premium. I yeah. Can't. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. It is expensive. It's, it's, it's not as expensive as you may think. If I remember correctly, it's like, it's still, still too expensive, but it's like $10,000, something like that. Oh, uh -huh, I see. Wow. Space but travel I, age. Is coming. Yeah, it's still too expensive for you know for me, way too expensive. But yeah, it is. It's coming. Uh, all right, uh, Vera. How about you? I, I, same question. Would you would you go up into outer space as a tourist? As I, an astronaut? <laughs> well, as a tourist. As a tourist, a space tourist. But, uh, well, I, I'm not healthy enough to go there, but um, I would probably prepare for it. And yes, I guess um, I would agree to to experience that amazing trip to to the space. It's something that really unforgettable. Something that you can um, tell your children, your grandchildren, and uh, they would be proud of you. <laughs> yeah. You're so extremely adventurous <laughs> and risky person. Right. Right. Well, anyway, I'd like to to see our world, our planet Earth, from the space. And um, yes, I would rather agree. <laughs> um, I, I would like to, I would like to start a open a casino on the moon. That's what I would like to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's also, uh, uh, well, um, um, sometimes I just I imagine that uh, people uh, will discover maybe in the in the near future they will discover the the, the life on the new planet and mm -hmm. um, it will be very affordable just to travel from one planet to another <laughs> just to. That, that would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that that would be nice, and also to to use Skype and ask, where are you from? I'm I'm from the planet Earth, and yeah. where are you from? <laughs> Beetlejuice. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, very interesting. Uh, all right, just to complete my survey, I have to ask Hogan as well. Hogan, how about you? Would you would you be a space tourist? If you had the yeah, if I get a free ticket, so why not? <laughs> so um, I I really like to go uh, up and high and see how the Earth look like. Um, and the, you you mentioned like X space, right? Uh -huh. SpaceX, okay. So yeah, that company is located in in uh, Los Angeles, very close to my my company. Um, but uh, I yeah, recently they failed actually the launching the rocket. So some a couple of months ago, I guess. So I'm a little scared. So <laughs> if, I, if I go, I really go there um, once the safety is guaranteed. Otherwise, I I may may not go. Yeah. I am not, not the first person to go up and high. Not, not the first trip. I think yeah. that's a very wise decision. <laughs> uh, I, I may be adventurous, but I'm not stupid. I absolutely agree with your uh, your analysis there. I'll let somebody else go first. That's okay. <laughs> you can have the glory. Okay. Um, absolutely. All right. Uh, you would love to see... Uh, how Earth looks like. Actually, you should. You would like to see what Earth looks like. Oh, space. not how, not how, but that's what, right. What Earth looks like. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I would. I would love to see what Earth looks like from space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would Would you come to my lunar casino? Me and, yes, I me, would. And, <laughs> me and Donald Trump are going to get together after Donald Trump loses the election. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can get him interested in something equally insane. <laughs> a casino on the moon. I'm sure he'll go for it. it. As long as I put his big name on it so you can see his name from Earth, I'm sure he'll do it. Such an ego, egotist. Okay. That's enough injecting my opinion into the matter. All right. Uh, we're out of time. Thanks a lot. That's a very fun discussion. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you very uh, thank much. You. Thank you very thank much. You.